The most organized and structured way of writing ActionScript is through packages and classes. This lesson demonstrates how to take advantage of this powerful feature and bypass coding on the timeline altogether. So here I've got a little movie open. It's got a ball, or rather a movie clip symbol instance on the stage with the instance name of ball. And there's a little bit of code here in the actions panel that is timeline code. So let's go into our actions panel through window actions. And we can see this code here. We're importing mouse event. Then we're listening for a mouse event click on the stage and then executing a function which adjusts the X and Y properties of that movie clip symbol instance dependent upon our cursor position. So what if we want to translate this code, which is timeline action script, into a real action script 3 class? Let's do that. So I'm going to just cut that code out of there. And I'm going to remove my actions layer altogether. And in the properties inspector here, as long as I have my document selected, you'll notice that there's a place to insert or define a document class. So let's call this ball jumper. So if we type in ball jumper and then hit this little edit class definition, initially it's going to let us know that there is no class found for this yet, but that Flash Professional will actually create one for us when we compile. And it'll basically create it as an empty class. It doesn't really do much of anything. And we don't want that. We want to actually add that code to our custom class in order to execute it the same way it would be done on the timeline. So let's just hit OK here. And then we're going to have to hit this again. And when we hit it the second time, it's going to ask us where we want to edit this class. Do we want to edit it within Flash Professional? Or do we want to use Flash Builder? So if you have Flash Builder on your system installed, you can choose Flash Builder and it'll actually edit it straight in Flash Builder for you. And the reason you'd want to do that is because Flash Builder has a much more robust IDE for editing ActionScript. But Flash Professional is just fine for smaller projects, so we're going to choose Flash Professional and hit OK. So this creates some code for us here. And we're going to go over each little piece of this code and then modify this class to accept the code that we've copied from the timeline. So the first thing we're going to want to do is save this. So let's save this code, balljumper.as. So a .as file is an ActionScript class file. So let's save that. And this is actually being saved in the same exact package as our FLA. When you see package up here, this defines exactly where this class lives within its package structure. So we have this class saved alongside the FLA, but it's actually common practice to do something like a reverse domain package naming. So if I wanted to do this per a domain that I own, I would say com.josephlebrec, and then I could name this like samples or something like that. So this would be in the package com.josephlebrec.samples. And the reason you do this is because it helps you organize your code better and it prevents any sort of bad interactions between different pieces of code. But for this example, we're not going to actually use a custom package. We're just going to use the default package. So within our package, we then have our class. And you can see that we're importing here. We're importing from flash.display.movieclip. And the reason we do that is because we're actually extending the stage. And the stage can either be typecast to movie clip or to sprite, depending on what you're doing. Movie clip is fine in most examples. If you want to go a little more lightweight and you don't have any animation on your stage, you can use sprite, since sprite doesn't have a timeline. Then we declare our actual class itself. So we're declaring it as a public class. And public generally means that this particular class can be invoked from anywhere within this application. We could also set a class or a method or even a different property to protected or to private. And these are just varying levels of access that other members of this application would be able to access the class or the property or whatever. But we're going to keep this public. This actually needs to be public on the class itself. 
So public class and the name of the class is ball jumper and ball jumper extends movie clip. What that basically means is that ball jumper is going to have all of the properties and methods that movie clip has plus anything that we create on top of that. And then we have our constructor function within our class. The constructor function basically is there to execute as soon as our class is finished constructing, right? So normally what we do is we set up a setup call on here. So setup or initialization or whatever you want to call it. And this is going to invoke an additional function or additional method on our class here. And we have to define that. So I'm going to actually define this as private. That means that only members of this particular class are going to be able to access it, which in this case, it doesn't really matter. But for example, so this is going to be a private function called setup. And we're going to set the return data type to void. And then within this function, we're going to want to put any of the code that we've copied from the timeline. So some of this is going to be applicable and some of it is not. So for instance, if I go through here, I can see that we're importing mouse event. Well, when you import things in a class, you're going to want to import them above the class itself. So right after the package. So I just copied and pasted that up there for us. We're going to define our listener here to the stage. So this is fine. Stage to add event listener. And we're using a mouse event dot click and going to invoke on click. But here we have to remove this function and redefine it elsewhere. So let's go down here and simply define this as an additional private function called on click. And this is going to do that same thing. So ball dot x to mouse x, ball dot y to mouse y. So let's test this out. If I go up to control, test movie, test, it'll compile our application. And you can see that it behaves exactly like it's supposed to. As I'm clicking on the stage, the ball X and Y position is matching the X and Y position of my mouse cursor. So this has been a quick example of how to use packages and classes instead of timeline action script within Flash Professional CS6.